Today seems like a time of real confusion for people. Things that used to work no longer do. So many people tell me they're very frustrated in their jobs, not happy. So there's a transition underway. My question to you is, where is this leading us, and how is a good way to get through this time? Actually, that's what this time is all about, is the confusion and the shift and releasing things that have not been comfortable for us, uh, perhaps for many lifetimes. The, the average human being believes that they are a separate being. They, they believe what the five physical senses tells them, so they see that you're in your body, I'm in my body, or they believe you are your body, I am my body, um, and that our interaction with the physical realm uh, is dangerous. Uh, you can get, you can fall off a cliff, you can get hit by a car, uh, you can be destroyed, damaged, you can starve to death. Uh, so we have what is generally referred to um, as an ego view of life. The ego being that part of us which believes that it is separate. It is an individual. It is an entity unto itself. In this transition time here, many people, this is not something that a, a tiny group of people are doing. It's a small percentage but it's uh, of the planet's population, but it's still millions of individuals, are connecting with inner guidance, or connecting with an inner voice, or connecting with intuition, uh, are discovering energy in the body, have discovered their aura, their chakras, have discovered that we are not a physical body, that we temporarily occupy a physical body as a means to an end, as a learning experience only. So the confusion comes when the old way falls apart and the new way is trying to uh, gain dominance in our awareness, in our consciousness. So we want to become aware of who we really are, who we have always been. Uh, I am an engineer and I have a degree in physics and I love uh, the new science that's coming along to assist us in all this which tells us that nothing that we have believed was solid and real is solid and real, which tells us that we have parallel realities now. This is quantum physics telling us this, which tells us that time is in no way what we thought time was, that time travel is at this point theoretically, but at least theoretically, possible. And time travel includes not only going to the future, but going to the past. Now, I'm reminded that A Course in Miracles says, miracles are natural. If miracles do not happen, something has gone wrong. That's a new way of thinking. And it also says that miracles rearrange time and space for their own benefit. Now, the interesting part to me is that science says, ah, yes, that is possible we can rearrange time and space. So if you are a person who was raised in this world by the authority figures of this world and told what was real and told to be responsible and take care of yourself and take care of your family by working hard and all of those uh, traditional value sets that we had, including a value set that said tradition is worth a lot, uh, and we're supposed to release all that, so that we can become divine creators, so that we can speak the word and things manifest in our reality, so that we can direct energy and heal cancer instantaneously. We're supposed to make this shift. That doesn't make sense to most people. To a few people, to a group of individuals who have spent lifetime after lifetime, studying spirituality, studying their intuition, learning with the greatest spiritual teachers that they could find. Uh, we have a recognition that that not only is possible, that is our job. We are to move into that realm. We are to become manifestors, to become creators. And I say we are to become 
You and I were talking earlier about people who are already doing this on the planet. Many of them documented. Many of them can be seen on YouTube and on the internet. Uh, those who do instantaneous healings. Famous one, John of God, who healed Wayne Dyer of his leukemia uh, in an overnight process, not something taking a lot of medication and treatment and radiation, just energy, just consciousness, just thought. I have heard, too, that those kinds of miraculous healings would be increasing at this time. Gary Renard said this, the guy that wrote Disappearance yes. of the Universe. I think you refer to that book occasionally. Yes, I do. I love it. He also talked about how all of the more frightening things would be increasing as well. So that makes this quite a uh, hot water time for us to be sitting around in the pot. Uh, maybe. It's actually just a time of choice. Which way do you want to go? Do you want to buy into fear and limitation and victimization? Or do you want to say, no thank you? I am a divine being. I am a creator. I am not a victim of circumstance, a victim of somebody else's reality, a victim of anybody else's expectations of me. I am not a victim of other people's needs. I am not a victim of poverty or economies or politics. We're free. Now, in our freedom, we have chosen to be victims. But it was just a choice. Now we are free to say, yes, many people learn a great deal by experiencing pain and struggle. That's been the karmic path for hundreds of thousands of years. Learning by karma, learning by do unto others. And we find it hard to believe that that even is a part of the karmic path because many times what happens to us happens in a different lifetime than when we did it to somebody else. But we've all chosen our life. We all decided who our parents were going to be, who our friends were going to be, who we were going to marry and divorce and marry and divorce. We have made all of these decisions because they were good decisions for what we wanted to learn about creation and reality. So the struggle that's going on is not a crime. It is not a disaster. It is something that each individual chose. Now, knowing that they chose it doesn't mean that we don't help them out of it, of course. Our compassion for others, our understanding that we and the others are actually the same being, says, I'm going to do everything within my power to free you from your struggle. But you have free will. Not in, no master teacher ever violated the free will of someone who came to them for help. They said, do you believe I can heal you? Yes, I do. All right, you're healed. Do you believe I can heal you? Well, I'm not sure about that. Not sure I deserve it. I haven't been a good per. You get to keep your problem, okay? No master teacher, there is no one strong enough to violate the free will of another human being. Whether it is to free them from their pain, to give them prosperity, to end their hunger or poverty. It cannot be done against an individual's free will. Average person does not realize, no way do they believe that they have created their problem. So they have much to learn through the process of karma, cause and effect, to come to the realization that I am responsible for everything I see there is nothing outside of me but a mirror. There is no reality separate from me out there in the world. Everything I see, I have created exactly as it is. So then what's actually going on when I look at another person and I say, Paxton, but wait a minute, they are wrong. That's what the ego always says. My ego? Yes, absolutely. The ego makes its decisions and its judgments. It is into judgment. If the ego stopped judging, the ego would not exist. <laughs> the ego is judgment. 
it says, according to my five physical senses, not according to anything intuitive, not according to anything spiritual, not according to what the angels say or the, my spirit guides say, but according to my five physical senses, that person was harmed. That person is harming. If we simply sit down and close our eyes, every master teacher has said, sit down, shut up, follow your breath, Ah, watch for the inspiration, watch for the understanding that comes. When we are resisting evil, the psalmist told us, resist not evil. When we are resisting evil, we cannot see the spirit world. We cannot see or hear or understand our spirit guides or the angelic realms. We have to make a shift. We have to say, I prioritize spirit. I prioritize spirit over and above resisting the evils on the planet. If I resist the evils on the planet, I commit myself to a repetition of experiencing the evils on the planet. That's the way the system works. Each individual is a creator. Each individual is source. Nothing is foisted upon anybody by any means at any time. When we focus on spirit, our life becomes a spirit-filled life. When we have a spirit-filled life, all of the wrongs and evils in the world that we used to perceive from our ego perspective evaporate. If you want to heal the world, heal yourself. There is no other way. On the web, notimeforkarma.com. And Sedona Journal is another resource for some of his material.